Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Mr. Broom. Good morning, everybody. Natural actor. So I thought it might be a good idea that in our weekly assembly slot, uh, we would read a book. And during that period of time, uh, we might get over a book with four or five, pa four or five chapters in it. And today I thought for our first book, I'd choose a book by a really well-known Yorkshire author called Ted Hughes. Can you guess what it is? Here we go. Still guess what it is? Yeah, it's The Iron Man. One of Mr. Broom's favourite books. So here we go then, guys. Let's have a look. So this book itself has got five chapters and those are the five chapters so the first one that we're going to read is all about the coming of the iron man so i'll read this chapter to you and then there'll be another chapter in next week's assembly so here we go then the coming of the iron man the iron man came to the top of the cliff how far had he walked nobody knew where had he come from nobody knew how was he made? Nobody knew. Taller than a house, the Iron Man stood at the top of the cliff on the very brink in the darkness. The wind sang through his iron fingers, his great iron head, shaped like a dustbin, but as big as a bedroom, slowly turned to the right. Slowly turned to the left. His iron ears turned this way and that way. He was here in the sea. His eyes, like headlamps, glowed white, then red, then infrared, searching the sea. Never before had the Iron Man seen the sea. He swayed in the strong wind that pressed against his back. He swayed forward on the brink of the high cliff. And his right foot, his enormous right foot, lifted up out into space and the iron man stepped forward off the cliff into nothingness crash down the cliff the iron man came toppling head over heels crash 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 from rock to rock snag to snag tumbling slowly and as he crashed and crashed and crashed well his legs fell off his iron arms broke off and the hands broke off the arms. His great iron ears fell off and his eyes fell out. His great iron head fell off. All the separate pieces tumbled, scattered, crashing, bumping, clanging down onto the rocky beach far below. A few rocks tumbled with him, then silence. Only the sound of the sea chewing away at the edge of the rocky beach where the bits and pieces of the Iron Man lay scattered far and wide, silent and unmoving. Only one of the Iron Mans, lying beside an, arm, an old, old sand-logged, washed-up seaman's boot, waved its fingers for a moment, like a crab on its back, and then it laid still. While the stars went on wheeling through the sky and the wind went on tugging at the grass on the cliff top and the sea went on boiling and booming, nobody knew the Iron Man had fallen. Night passed. Just before dawn, as the darkness grew blue and the shapes of the rocks separated from each other, two seagulls flew crying over the rocks. They landed on a patch of sand. They had two chicks in a nest on the cliff. Now they were searching for food. One of the ghouls flew up. What? He had seen something. He glided low over the sharp rocks. He landed and picked something up. Something shiny, round and hard. It was one of the Iron Man's eyes. He brought it back to his mate. They looked at this strange thing. And the eye looked at them. It rolled from side to side, looking first at one gull and then the other. The gulls, peering at it, thought it was a strange kind of clam peeping at them from its shell. Then the other gull flew up, wheeled around and landed and picked something up. 
some awkward everything. Finally, the gull dropped it beside the eye. This new thing had five legs. It moved. The gulls thought it was a strange kind of crab. They thought they had found a strange crab and a strange clam. They did not know that they had found the Iron Man's eye and the Iron Man's right hand. But as soon as the eye and the hand got together, the eye looked at the hand. Its light glowed blue. The hand stood up on three fingers and its thumb and craned its forefinger like a long nose. It felt around. It touched the eye. Gleefully, it picked up the eye and tucked it under its middle finger. The eye peered out between the forefinger and the thumb. Now the hand could see. There's a bit of a picture of it there, look. It looked around, then it darted and jabbed one of the gulls with its stiff, stiffly hard-held finger, then darted at the other and jabbed him. The two gulls flew up into the wind with a frightened cry. Slowly, then the hand crept over the stone, searching. It ran forward suddenly, grabbed something and tugged. But the thing was stuck between two rocks. The thing was one of the man's arms. At last, the hand left the arm and went scuttling hither and thither among the rocks till it stopped and touched something gently. This thing was the other hand. This new hand stood up and hooked its finger around the little finger of the hand with the eye and let itself be led. Now the two hands, the seeing one leading the blind one, walking on their fingertips, went back together to the arm and together they tugged it free. The hand with the eye fastened itself onto the wrist of the arm. The arm stood up and walked on its hand. The other hand clung on behind as before and this strange trio went searching. An eye. There it was, blinking at them speechlessly beside a black and white pebble. The seeing hand fitted the eye to the, to the blind hand and now both hands could see. They went running among the rocks. And soon they found a leg. They jumped on top of the leg and the leg went hopping over the rocks with the arm swinging from the hand that clung to the top of the leg. The other hand clung on top of the hand. The two hands with their eyes guided the leg, twisting it this way and that as a rider guides a horse. Soon they found another leg and the other arm. Now each hand with an eye under its palm and an arm dangling from its wrist rode on a leg separately about the beach. Hop, hop, hop they went, peering among the rocks. One found an ear, and at the same moment the other found a giant torso. Then the busy hands fitted the legs to the torso. Then they fitted the arms, each fitting the other, and the torso stood up with the legs and arms, but no head. It walked about the beach, holding its eyes up in its hands, searching for its lost head. And at last, there was the head, eyeless, earless, nested in a heap of red seaweed. Now is no time the Iron Man had fitted his head back and his eye, sorry, now in no time the Iron Man had fitted his head back and his eyes were in place and everything in place except for one ear. He strode about the beach searching for his lost ear as the sun rose over the sea and the day came. The two gulls sat on their ledge, high on the cliff. They watched the immense man striding to and fro over the rocks below. Between them, on the nesting ledge, lay a great giant ear. The gulls could not hear it, eat it. The baby gulls could not eat it. There it lay on the eye hedge, on the eye ledge. Far below, the iron man searched. At last, he stopped and he looked at the sea. Was he thinking the sea had stolen his ear? Perhaps he was thinking the sea had come up while he lay scattered and had gone down again with his ear. He walked towards the sea. He walked into the breakers and there he stood for a while, the breakers bursting around his knees. Then he walked in the inn deeper, deeper and deeper. The gulls took off and glided down low over the great iron head that was now moving slowly out through the swell. The eyes blazed red level with the wave tops till a big wave covered them 
and foam spouted over the top of the head. The head still moved out underwater. The eyes and the top of the head appeared for a moment in a hollow of the swell. Now the eyes were green, then the sea covered them and the head. The gull circled low over, over the line of the bubbles that went on moving slowly on into the deep sea. Now our next chapter is called The Return of the Iron Man. Because of course in our story at the minute, the Iron Man's gone. He's disappeared out into the sea after putting himself back together again. I wonder what's going to happen next. I'm looking forward to the next section next week. So home life in the broom household continues. Um, just to give you a bit of an idea what's going on at the minute, just in here we have got Owen having his hair cut. Hello. Say hello, Owen. Hello. And Mrs. B doing the jobs. Hi. Yeah. So yeah, and I promised you when uh, when we were uh, talking to a few of you earlier that last week or towards the end of last week that we'd have a special guest singer as part of my assembly, uh, and here he is. Yeah, this is Red. Hello, Red. Hello, Red. Oh, 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 we've got a bit of movement, but just wait till you listen to this. This is amazing. Red only sings one song. So I have to put this around, but just wait till you hear it. It's amazing. Supposed to be a bit longer than that. It's a very short performance. Let's see if we can find him. But he's got it there to sing. Listen, Red. He <laughs> didn't do that for any other song. Dear. I think he could be our next person to join choir, quite easily. <laughs> did you enjoy that sunshine? Yeah, yeah. he did. Arr. So yeah, so there you go. There's your you superstar singer. Have a what? No, I will have a wonder upstairs because oh, someone having else has had his hair cut. He's a what? Beauty treatment. Beauty treatment. Oh, this sounds interesting. Let's have a wander upstairs, shall we? Joel! Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where is noise? How are you doing? Ah, you've got colour in your hair. Very good. What are you playing? I'm not playing out, I'm watching. What are you watching? Galaxy 11. Hmm, what's that then? got like it's like so you know the galaxy 11 phone yeah yeah it's that but like it's with footballers so they have to save and they play against the enemy yeah very good this is a tidy room he's made his bed this morning <laughs> don't look at the floor not a good idea <laughs> and, and the one having his hair cut of course he's he's really really tidy Oh my lord, look at the mess. So that's something we're definitely going to have to work on while uh, Mr. B's working from home and everybody else's, I suppose. So, uh, yeah, catch you soon.